hello and welcome. Let's go over all the cards that were revealed of the upcoming Crimson Curse expansion. And uh, there are quite a few. And uh, this site doesn't include their cost. But their cost might change. Actually, their <coughs> effects may change as well. But the most important part is uh, what they do now. And uh, let's just go over that. Vitality is a new keyword that uh, boosts by one for four turns uh, in case of this card. It also gives a shield. I could see this card as a five. And it seems pretty useful, although you have to play the card you want to protect. This is not a card you want to play with just anything, but uh, but it does give protection to uh, a vulnerable unit that uh, just stays stays up. Although this is <clears throat> the the only problem with this card is that if your opponent has enough juice to take out your units, your your key units, when they get played, then playing protection on them later is pretty useless. So, maybe not the best card, but I could see this as a, as a 5. It would be a lot more valuable if it worked differently, like it was a spell that uh, protected the next unit you played. Because then that would be a, a lot, more, lot stronger. I could see this as a 5, maybe as a 4. The fact that it only generates value for 4 turn and you get a shield on top of it, I could see this as a, as a 4. It kind of depends. The only reason I'm 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 kind of uh, questioning the four because of one later card, but other than that, I'm fine with it. Dryad Scarus. So vitality for six turns. If you control a dryad, purify that unit first. Now this is a lot different because you're getting six vitality, although that cannot be wasted, but that's only wasted if you die. Which can happen in six turns? That's that's quite a bit. Because you might want to play value generators at the, the first half of the round. And uh, you gotta play this uh, pretty early to get value from it. Also, Purify. Uh, which is good, but <clears throat> this is not an ex exceptionally good card. Because if your opponent just uh, kills the unit that you just uh, used this on... Just to just to purify it and just give it some boost. This is not something you can save for later. You gotta purify uh, early on. And uh, bleed effects, as we will see, only last for a certain round. So it's not a great card, actually. Especially if the unit dies, then you just like didn't do too much. So I could see this as a four, actually. <clears throat> it seems it seems okay, but. I think this is a 4. Uh, turn is just, Nilf Guardian card. Remove a unit's shield, then either damage it by 3, gi or give an allied unit a shield and boost it by 3. <clears throat> if shields are common, then this is pretty good. And I'm just gonna make the assumption that the other effects don't are not linked to the shield. Because <clears throat> if you actually need to remove a shield to do these effects, then... Uh, it's, it's a fairly weak card. Although you remove a shield and damage by 3, or give you, or giving an allied unit a shield and boost by 3, which is uh, technically better, unless you're killing something uh, relevant. It kind of depends. I could see this as a 5. If, if uh, the first, first thing just happens first, uh, it's not really a condition to doing damage, and uh, boosting and shielding, then uh, I could see this as a 5. <clears throat> well, of course it's Nilf Guardian card. Yeah, but you're giving a shield and boosting and removing a shield. I think this is just gonna be a 5. Moondust. Uh, useful card anyway. This the uh, Dried Cares is the only one so far that's kind of struggling. Moondust, uh, purify unit and damage it by 4. Pretty good. Uh, although this is neutral, so... I, I think this is gonna be like a... I don't know. It's it's kind of hard to judge this. Because damage by 4 could be just too big in some cases. <clears throat> but Purify is good. I could see this as a 6. I think that's more reasonable considering this is neutral. If it was faction card, I would say like it's a 5. Ta. 
Clear all row effects from your side and boost an allied unit by 4. For every row effect cleared, decrease the boost by 2. I don't like this card because uh, it clears all row effects. And uh, <clears throat> row effects are not really a thing right now. And uh, But it can just shut down a card that we can later uh, check out. But it's just like a hard counter to row effects. And it's probably going to be not worth including usually. I would say that this would need to be at least a 10. Uh, to justify what it's doing. I don't know. At, at least a 10. I don't like this, these binary counters. That, yeah, you have the counter. Of course, like, you can have, like, cheaper one... Cheaper removal if you're just trying to shut down one row effect, but you're trying to shut down two row effects. And you also have this plus four boost on top if that doesn't work out. <clears throat> so, I think... The price needs to be high, but I don't like this card. Uh, Sandstorm. Damage unit at both ends of enemy row by 3. Uh, considering it's neutral, it's gotta be like a 6. Uh, 5 would be more justified if it was a faction card. Like, it's damage, so removal, but it's kinda like hard, because you need to... Your opponent needs to play into it, or you need to set it up. And at least he needs to have like 4 units, most likely, to even... Uh, to even allow it. So, it's it's not a great card. <clears throat> Inspirational Ballad. Give Vitality an allied unit for 6. So this is basically trash, unless you're, unless Vitality is, uh, is the main strategy you're going for. Or I, I just don't really see how this is going to be good, because you play it and it gets purified or, or, or the unit gets killed, so this is bad. Salmon, damage unit by 3. That flow move adjacent units to the other row. I don't see how you're gonna work use this, but I suppose we can call this situational. As far as I know, the cost is a set to 4. So it's it's least cheap, like 4 for free, uh, 3 for 4. That's okay. And moving people, uh, moving stuff around could be good. This could be good in like damage based, move, slum but movement based Quetel. <clears throat> Feast of Blood. Even an unit blading for six turns if you control a vampire purified first. Uh, kind of the same problem as a dried Karas, but it's even more of a problem because although bleeding can actually trigger shields, so you can just pop it, but you need to target the unit that can actually take six damage, and you need to tr uh, you need to target that unit soon, and purifying a big unit. I don't know, this this is just this is just messy. I don't really see this card uh, doing too much. Damage run by two. Death blow spawn and summon a bear abomination and a random ally draw. So these are like a pretty win win moreish cards. It's kinda like situational. So setting up two damage, that's not too hard. I suppose this is gonna uh Encourages crack as a leader a little bit more. It's kind of okay. I'm I'm kind of okay with this. the The cost kind of depends on the bear abomination. So, but overall, okayish card. But it, this the the value of this can change uh, drastically based on whether you can actually uh, uh, trigger the death blow or not. And this might encourage players to to have a less vulnerable to have a less vulnerable situation on the board. <clears throat> uh, double spot ball damage unit by two and give it poison. That blow give poison to adjacent units. It's a little bit like uh, cards that are gonna be coming up, but yeah, poison is basically if you if you if the unit is poisoned twice, then it just dies. So it's kind of like a soft, soft removal. Well, it's not really a soft removal, but like you need to... At first, you just deal damage and poison it, then you can... Uh, you need to poison the game. It's 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 okay, it's kind of hard to uh, put a value on this, but it's kind of like a 4. It obviously has a synergy with the, uh, the Dryad Poisoners in, in Squirtle in general. So Bleeding for 6, this is garbage. Purify all units on the row. Uh, enemy or you. Uh, 
I think it's, this is uh, worth four. Um, I think that's the cost they they assign to it. Uh, it's hard to say. I could definitely see this because you can see that the bleeds bleeds can uh, definitely worth a lot, but I don't really see that these huge bleeds and huge vitality uh, cards are going to make it. So it's going to be more uh, small or like mid or like two, two to four bleeds and vitality is got to be more more common. Gurkane, a damage of bleed, bleeding enemy unit by the amount of bleeding it has. So the unit has to have significant amount of bleed and it needs to have twice as much health so for Gurkane to actually deal damage and not just waste the bleed. So if you could do something like play Feast of Blood, then Gurkane, then in the last two, two rounds you can uh, use this as some kind of a, a as a burst, of course, if it doesn't get purified. But uh, generally it would be better if you just played like 4 bleed and you followed it up with Gurkane, but then at that point the unit would need to have 7 health, because you play the bleed, it takes damage, then you Gurkane, 3 damage, plus the bleed is gonna deal damage, but like 7 health? Uh, that's quite a bit, and this unit is probably garbage. Sentry on Envoy is just crazy. Uh, formation, so you get either plus one in the back if you play it there, or uh, zeal on the melee row, and uh, two charges are kind of worth like uh, two points each, but it can be worth three points as well, and you can just play it in the back. So this ranges from like a six to nine uh, point unit. <clears throat> I'm not exactly sure the, the the supply cost they assigned to it, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was like a six. But maybe they may have may may say like it's a it's a five. The thing is, I think this this needs to be a six because the fact that the, the assumption that Nordal Realm can can not can 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 have nothing on the board, like if you have anything on the board and Sintry and Envoy can come down on the melee row, Zeo give two charges to that, and now you have a six point card. Although you need to have some some combos, but I think that's kind of reasonable. So I think this needs to be a six point card for what it does. Uh, Brokilon, Sentinel, damage enemy by two, summon a copy of this unit from your deck to destroy. So basically this is kind of like a Vault Hunt Rider, but it's a more conditional one. Uh, I believe this has the cost of five. It's totally fine. Vault Hunt Rider is already pretty good, but this needs to be a little bit uh, cheaper. Although this has removal, but this needs to be a little bit cheaper than the Valhunt Rider because you can just play Valhunt Rider on an end board. <clears throat> Menagerie Keeper. Uh, damage an enemy by two. If you have Tactic in your hand, give that unique bleeding for two turns. So this is the kind of status that's really hard to stop down because you stop because you 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 enable bleeding and they take one damage and like now what? Like you you can't purify that. This is too weak. Uh, I think this needs to be a 5. Uh, this overall gives you 6 value, and you need to have a tactic card, but I think it would be too strong as a 4. Generally, it, it does have like 4 removal. It, it can kill pretty strong units. Dryad Ranger, Harmony, uh, that means if you play other uh, races from the from Skuatel, then it gets boosted by 1. Damage an enemy by two. If it survives, give it poison. I believe this uh, has the cost of five. Uh, pretty good. Uh, <laughs> like harmony can worth like let's just say it's worth like two points, but of course the dryad ranger can die. So, but it also gives poison. I don't know. I th I think this this costs five. That's the provision cost they they uh, assign to it. And poison can be very valuable if you can follow it up with other poison. But at that point, uh, you would need to... Well, if you're doing Dryad Ranger poison, then you're also using damage on it, on that other unit. So you're using 4 damage to take out something. Could be more than 4, but uh, you're using 4 damage for sure. So if you can do other sources of poison, uh, that would be ideal.
But this is like a targeted poison. Uh, Sintry on Knight. Damage on an enemy by 2. Death Blow gain vitality for 2 turns. Again, an extremely hard card to shut down. I think this has the cost of 4. But I think this should easily have the cost of 5. It's kind of hard to say. But this is this can easily be a, a, a 6 value. And you can't do much about it other than not have anything that's a 2 or less. Anyway. Small Blood Ravager. Uh, Ravager. <clears throat> uh, melee. Damage an enemy by 2. Bloodthirst. 2. Give an enemy... Give the enemy damaged by this unit bleeding for 2 turns. Damn. I think there's gotta be a, another 5 here. It's a little bit like the Sintrian Knight. Actually, this is better than the Sintrian Knight. Because uh, making sure that some, like, two units are, are in the red is, like, super easy. But making sure that something, like, exactly takes two damage. Uh, that's kind of hard. Bruxa! Damage the enemy by two. Death blow, game five. Uh, I believe this is, uh, they have a, at a cost of 4. And uh, it's it's a little bit like the Sintrian Knight, except that it just, it can get more value. But it's unlikely because it's situational. So you can't really play this early. So I, I think this is like, the Bruxa is clearly worse than the Sintrian Knight, and, and the Sintrian Knight is worse than the Swall Blood Ravager. And I think they have the Brock set for. And I could agree with that. Anyway, Sintrian Enchantress. Range give an allied unit uh, vitality for two turns. And Bonded give an allied unit vitality for four turns instead. Uh, it's a little bit similar to the Plumber. It's basically like the Plumber. Uh, yeah, they, they are basically the same unit. Except Sintrian Enchantress is locked to the range row. Uh, Plumber doesn't have such condition. And the plumber I know is a four. Sintra and Enchantress, I don't know. Maybe two maybe it would be too good as a as a four. Because you play it and it's like four on play. And it's gonna go to a five. But I know that like a lot of the fours are are have the potential of becoming more. So I, I, I could see this as a four. But this could be really good as a four. If you have two of them, then you just play a five, then you play a seven. And uh I think this is more of a 4, and this is more of a 4 than a 5, but uh, but they can be really strong. And this is more of a uh, a threat. They, they, the opponent has to remove, so it encourages removal. Right, Fledling? Uh, I could see this is a 4. You play it, and you need to just follow it up with a bunch of uh, crap. Uh, other Skirtal units. It could be even weak, because... The, well, you play the Sintrian Enchantress, and you get a 5. And this you need to follow up with a bunch of Squirtle cards to make, just, just to be okay. Alp! Damage an enemy, unit by two. If Alp is under Blood Moon, drain an, an enemy uh, by two instead. So it becomes a seven. I think this is a, a, at a five. And considering how hard it is to uh, have Blood Moon up uh, by the only card, we're just gonna check later. Uh, I think this is fine. Finish. Imperial Diviner. I think this costs 5. It Assimilate and Purify. Uh, yeah, Assimilate is when you play cards from another faction. So it's basically like Harmony, but whenever you that happens, you boost by 1. And Purify for like 2-ish, that seems kind of good. So this is this is like a core card for the Assimilate deck. Sintrian Artificer. Uh, formation again, you can play uh, me uh, melee row zeal and uh, range row plus one. So you can have a, I think this is a five, and you give a shield out for, for like right away or just a little bit later. This is a better card than, uh, for example, uh, rune word. Because you play this in the back. Actually, this makes more sense to play earlier. You play this as a four. Then, then you play the card that you need to protect. So Sintrian Artificer, pretty damn good. Because with Room Word, you play the card that you want to protect after. That's not good. You play the card, it dies, and you're like, oh, well, I do have shield. 
and you play another card, well, that dies too. Well, I do have shield, but then you play another card, well, I'm still holding on to shield, but, like, there's nothing to defend. So this is a lot better. Force Whisperer. Deploy immediately, give an enemy unit poison. Pretty good. Deploy. Ranged, give an allied unit shield. So this is a lot better in that way, because a uh, Dried Ranger can just deal two damage. Well, it's not better because Dried Ranger deals damage, but how good is poison? That's the big question. I, I, I could see this using it as a, as a five, because if two poison cards just target the same enemy, uh, then, then the enemy just dies. So this is like a, a removal for Squiatel that no other faction has access to. Well, at least uh, not in the way Squiatel does. And uh, giving some shields, yeah, it's not going to be as good as the Sintrian Artificer, especially because it's not an order. The fact that it's delayed shield, I think that's going to be so damn important. So, like, for shields, not, not only this has, like, one more point, but also the fact that it's delayed shield, that's really good. Ladder, or whatever. Destroy an allied unit and gain vitality for four turns. So this is really good in Arrakis. And also, like, just if you're destroying anything that's uh, uh, less than a four, then this is this should be okay. Of course, kind of depends on the cost of the unit. I think this is kind of okay as a, as a five-ish. But of course, it kind of depends on the situation. If you're killing uh, an ancient foglet, uh, that's that's pretty good. So yeah, that, that's about it. If you kill an ancient foglet, then this card is crazy. I could see this is um, yeah. Well, I think it's at, at a five. It's kind of reasonable. Nakurat order melee drain an enemy by one, so it's delayed. A cooldown, whenever you play an organic card, reduce this unit's cooldown by one. Uh, unless this is a key card, I, I would see it as a five. Because it's a somewhat delayed four that continuously generates value, that also synergizes with the organic cards. I think this is gonna be a five, although your opponent definitely has the opportunity to kill it. Uh, Dryad Matron, every allied turn on turn end, move to the rightmost spot on this row and boost an allied unit on the left by one. So as far as I know, this only works when it moves and it becomes a four point on play. As far as I know, it's cost five points, uh, but it's more like a six point card. But although you need to be keep uh, need to be playing. But if you can compare it to like something like a Hawker Smuggler, then it's a four point card that's cost seven and it's a five point on play and it's any three turns, it's already worth it. And this is already worth it in two turns if you keep playing. But if it, if it was three turns, then maybe it would be too unfair to the Hawker Smuggler because that's unconditionally, although you have to have a unit in hand, somewhat unconditionally. Keeps giving you points. Although that point can be somewhat wasted. No, oh, I, I think this is a, a very, very strong card. I think the cost of like six would be more reasonable for what it does. Because you, you play it and you just start boosting right away. Especially because uh, units have that syner synergy with that boost. You... You want to play a dwarf that has like, oh, if it's boosted, then boost boost yourself. Then you play the dryad matron, play the dwarf, and now it suddenly got boosted. So I think at six it would be more reasonable. <clears throat> Small blood butcher. Uh, deploy damage on an ally by two, then give an enemy unit uh, bleeding for three turns. Keep in mind if you are hitting an ally that has shield, then you're just gonna play a seven point butcher man. But yeah, like this could uh, trigger Berserk, so it's pretty good, actually. Uh, yeah, this a uh, good synergy with Swalwood Fanatic, because you play this for 4, and if it goes down to half health, then it becomes a 5 point bear. And you just play this guy for 4 for 4, and if you play it with uh, Swalwood Butcher, then you play this for 5, and you play this for 7, and they're all pretty damn good. So, even worst case scenario, it's gonna be a 5. 5 point card, you just deal damage to one of your allies and it's gonna be a 5 point card, so... I don't know, this this would need to be at least a 5. I think. 
but maybe maybe more than that. Kind of depends on how hard it is to pull off his synergy, but I, it looks like it's not that hard. But also it's bleeding, so it can be somewhat shut down, so I think it's more like a 5. Duchess is informant. <clears throat> Spying deploy, spawn and play a base copy of enemy non-spying unit. So you play this on the enemy board and you just uh, play a copy of one of their cards on the board. And you're also giving up 4 points, so it would need to be a pretty strong card. And something that actually works with your deck. Well, obviously you can like, I don't know, like you can just like old spear tip. That would be insane. So this could be extremely strong, or not very strong <laughs> at all. But interesting card for sure, and also really uh, works well with the Simulate. Sintrian Spellweaver. Oh, the cost of it <sighs> kind of depends. I think it's I think it's a cheap card because you're giving up a, a lot of points. So I think it's a four four point card. Sintrian uh, Spellweaver. Uh, order damage unit by one. Gain one charge whenever you play a mage. So you play this as kind of a delayed 5, uh, that has the, uh, wait, well, the possibility of gaining more. I think this is gotta be just 6. At least, I, I think it's gotta be a 6, for what it does. Watchman, uh, give an adjacent unit a shield. It's it's a little bit like the Simtrian Artificer, so I believe this is a 5, and it seems reasonable as one. Again, this is a better way to give out shields because you give out, you protect the guy that you want to protect when it gets played. And if and if this gets removed, then this is baiting the removal. So that's all good. This Grace Brawler, as far as I know, uh, deploy uh, blood first, uh, lock this unit. So I believe this is, uh, has the cost of five, and you just get uh, seven for five. And also, this is really good to throw away. Uh, whenever your opponent can't uh, answer it, because Berserk destroy this unit. As far as I know, if it takes 3 damage, then it gets destroyed, uh, not 4. If it was 4, then this unit would be just too good, but like at 3 it gets destroyed. It's still a good unit, I, I could see Skellige using at least 1 in most decks, because now you have the option to just slam down a, a 7 point bronze that's like super cheap, dirt cheap, uh, just to take the round. And uh, setting up his uh, condition of blood first 3 is not that hard in the long round. So it's both good in a short round and a long round. Uh, destroy the highest unit. It's like a single target Scorch. It's gonna be cheaper than Scorch. Well, I don't know. It still has the same risk of Scorch and many times it's gonna have the same effect. So it's, it's, it's a little cheaper Scorch. I don't know, but this doesn't have the oomph of Scorch of like, oh, everything's burned down. So this is probably gonna, uh, gonna be a bad card. Unless it's like super cheap. But even then, you have like Geralt and like 3 point plus just kill anything above 8, so... I don't know. It's a weird card. Scepter of Storms. An artifact, zeal order, spawn, any kind of weather you want. Uh, of, the, of the basic ones. <clears throat> I don't know. Like, the thing is, most basic weather... Well, basic weather is like complete trash. And you want none of those cards, and not sure why you would want it with an artifact and uh, the versatility just to use any uh, one of those that actually you don't want to use. So I'm not sure what kind of cost they put on this thing. It doesn't really matter because the premium you pay for it is kind of pointless because you don't want to play better. So they will need to first buff better. Portal! Summon two random units with four provision costs from your deck, both sides of this uh, unit. Yeah. So you, well, the thing is, like the four point cards can be like, like, uh, can be, can represent more points. So four provision cost can represent like ten, but I believe the portal is thirteen. It's not really good as a thinning maneuver because you give up one of your key golds or like a very very costly card just to thin out some bronzes. So, of course, if if you're desperate for some thinning, it might work. It's not too bad, but. Um, that's also, it can be good as a finisher if you have key bronzes just to somehow take the, the game. Because bronzes are often key in a deck, so it makes sense. <clears throat> Crimson Curse, destroy an allied unit. Then apply Blood Moon Row effects to both allied rows and set its duration equal to the destroy use, destroyed unit's power. Blood Moon, every allied turn, on turn start, boost random vampire. 
on this row by two. Wow. This is getting long. <laughs> I thought I could just go over it like super fast. Anyway, uh, this looks like a terrible card. Uh, you first need to have a unit, destroy it, have to have vampires on both turns that have to stay alive. And then you start a value generation of four. After you destroy the unit, I just say you destroy something that's a five. That's five turns. That's maybe too little. And if you do that, you destroy the five. You include the discard that's like cost like 14 in your deck. And you gonna get 20 points of value. But then you destroyed a five. You got 20. So you generated 15 points of value. And if, if at any point the, the vampires die or just like... This is also over time, so... Oh. The only only saving grace of the Crimson Curse is that some units have some synergy with it, so they become a slightly stronger, but I don't think that's gonna just make it good enough. This is also a terrible card because uh, your opponent might just want to force you to play it. It's, it's an extremely easy card to force because your opponent has to play it like at least like five turns before. And if your opponent is using a Crimson Curse deck, and you just like a little bit pressure him on like Crimson Curse time and like, okay, never mind that. Let's just go to last round. You don't have Crimson Curse, now what? Uh, Knighthood, uh, split uh, six boosts randomly between all units on ally row. On ally row, very important. So, so you just played with the three dumb and uh, you get 12 points. I believe it costs seven, so this is pretty good. A water of Brocolon. Spawn and summon a Dryad Fledgling to an allied row if you control. Yeah, 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 yeah. So two, two Dryad Fledgling is you have a Dryad. So Dryad Fledgling is uh, this one. It looks pretty good. And Harmony. So these are kind of worth like a five. But cost four. And Water of Brocolon gives you two. Which, which works pretty well. So, <clears throat> but of course, this is only a good card if uh, the meta is not removal heavy. Although, well, this is this is a fine card. You get two of these. I don't know how, what would be the cost of this. I think it's like nine to ten because you get two, two get two at the same time. That that's gotta be better than one. Yeah, I think it's like at least a nine. I think. Yeah. Land of Thousand Fables. Uh, deploy. Play a special card from your deck. This is an extremely expensive tutor, as far as I know. It's like ten plus, just for a special card. I think it's like. Thinning is more valuable because now we have we start with 10 cards plus draw two times three six uh plus like uh this uh, plus you have a lot of mulligans so it's it's pretty likely that you actually draw into the cards you want that's why the witchers are so damn good because you thin your deck you thin your deck and at the end you almost always or usually you have the the cards you need you need when so, I don't really see the uh, Land of Thousand Fables doing too much, but it's nice to have. They can always lower the cost a little bit later. It's a good good effect to have. Tran Mantis, a stock. Give the next unit uh, played by your opponent a poison and transform it into uh, transform this into Tran Mantis Strike. So you just get a, like a vanilla unit basically, and you poison something. Uh, this of course can be played around. Uh, your opponent o always gonna be playing a weak unit when you're playing a trap because it can be pitfall trap, it can be a uh, fireball trap, so he doesn't wanna... or maybe, yeah, he doesn't wanna get punished by that, so... This doesn't really change that picture. And of course you can just uh, turn this around and get a Mantis. So this is an okay trap. And it's just a pretty reliable trap. So this is gonna be pretty good instead of the the fire trap that's complete garbage. And uh, synergizing with, of course, uh, uh, poison dryads. Hand the guide uh, sword. Kill a unit. Uh, deal deal two damage, and if you kill it, you get you play a copy of it, which is insane. But this is like a pretty pretty big risk and if, if you pull it off like imagine just killing an old spear tip and you just get your own old spear tip and you did two damage i believe this has the cost of nine but it's like it, it's it's a bit of a risk also you might not find a unit that's uh that's good for you so as there's always that risk 
Overall, this is not too bad because even if you kill like a, a seven point card, or and if we assume this costs nine, then you just get a copy of that, and let's say that's good for you, then this is a decent card. But of course, this encourages a, a removal heavy playstyle. Sangreal uh, boost the unit by six and give it shield. Again, this is not preemptive. So it's kind of like an odd way to give shield. And also the fact that you boost up by six is not necessarily what you want. This could be good on something like Imbralit, but like you play Imbralit and it gets locked, gets killed, whatever, and you don't you can't you can't really rely on this to just give it give it Sangreal. So I think this would need to be like a eight point card. Or like an 8 cost card here. And I just don't really like it. I don't really see it doing too much. It's a fine card to have. But it's not really a good way to protect your units. See, so far, Nilfgaard with the Watchman. And uh, and uh, No Realm with the Sintuyan Artificer. Has the best ways to protect their units. Vivian Oriol. Deploy, destroy an enemy artifact and boost self by its cost. It's a terrible card. <clears throat> Because it's like a win more artifact counter. And if you if your opponent doesn't have an artifact, then you have a one pointer. Terrible. But if you have if your opponent has an artifact, he loses. Not only his his artifact is gone, but also you get like a pretty fat unit. It's a terrible card. It's a terrible card. This never should exist. What is this? The only good part about this card that artifacts are not really getting played right now. <laughs> Except traps. But, ah, disgusting. No, terrible card. Roderick of Duntin. A spying deploy, look at two random gold cards from your deck and play one. Okay, that's pretty good. I, I think this has the cost of seven. So, yeah, you can definitely justify the cost if you have key golds. And also, this can really find them. So, Nilfgaard uh, has... Uh, reliable ways to find their cards. That's pretty good. Also supports the spying archetype. Fav of the art. Uh, deploy. Play a nature card from your deck. That's organic. So this is like basically an organic tutor. Okay. That you can possibly replay. Uh, probably not gonna be too relevant, but uh, it is something to keep in mind. <clears throat> Win home of Atra. Shield every ally turn on turn end, boost this unit by two if it has a shield. So I think this has the cost of uh, seven, and you just play it as a four that has a shield, and probably your opponent's gonna take more turns to pop that shield off. But like, it's pretty good. Four with a shield, it's pretty good. And this also encourages uh, just like having some damage. Track is gonna be crazy because you can just pop off the shields. Vian the Tabris. Set unit's power equal to its cost. This is really good if your opponent's playing uh, like boosting smaller units or you're playing uh, effect heavy uh, high cost units and you can just like make them big. And it's on deploy so it's not uh, order. So this, this should be pretty good. Even if the unit gets locked and your opponent might think like, oh yeah, I'm good now, or just I don't have to worry about that anymore. But then, like, no, the fact that it has a higher low cost is always going to be a risk. It's got a good card. It's a, it's a bit situational, kind of depends on your deck. Gale, damage and by one, death blow, boost self by the destroyed enemy's base power. Uh, this is incredibly swingy. Because... Let's just say, okay, you're not gonna kill Old Spirited, but like if you did, it's just crazy. Like this could be a, a, a 16 point card. That's insane. Extremely swingy card. I don't really get the whole point behind it. But let's just say that uh, this is like a 7. I don't know. Kind of depends on like how do they want this. But because like this could alone win the game if it's too cheap. So I would like, I would rather see this card as like something like an 8 at least. Yeah, 8 or 9. Because I don't really want to encourage like these extremely swingy cards. And it's not, not even that, that your opponent plays it and it's now vulnerable, but like he's just like mucking around on his, on your, your, your side of the board. And now you have a 1, like, BAM, now you lost the game. 
Fisher King, I think this is a 7. Deploy, ranged, put a card from your deck at the top. I like the idea of this card, but I don't like the fact that this is gonna be another uh, play at round 2 a card. That, like, first round matters, then the second round is all about, like, oh, let's just set up round 3 again, because that, that's what always happens. Uh, so, Fisher King. Okay, card, and it's like, and it's it can be shut down, so... Another way to try to set up Regis, uh, your ideal win condition. Regis Bloodlust, I think it's a 9 cost card. Damage it by 4, reach 2, uh, deflow, deflow, death blow, banish it. Banish effect is pretty strong. But yeah, this is okay, I think, for, for what it does. Proto Flatter, damage it by 3, dominance, gain an, an enemy unit, uh, drain an enemy unit by 3 instead. So, when dominance is when you have the highest unit. I think this has the cost of 9. So, this is a conditional 10 and a base 7. Kind of removal heavy. It's okay. Damian de la Tour. Refresh your leader's ability. I think this has the cost of 13. It doesn't really matter. The thing is, the problem with this unit is that he has order. And it can, can just can, can, can get shut down. And uh, your leader ability would need to be pretty damn strong to really justify this guy. And also the fact that you're just playing him and it's just like such a huge risk. So how are you going to protect him? Are you going to make him immune? Are you giving him a shield? Like that that needs to be part of the cost and the situation or just like... I don't know. You, you can't rely on this to build attack. That's what I'm saying. But... Could be powerful. Good good uh, Deploy purify adjacent units. I believe this is the cost of 7. So, Purify could easily uh, worth a lot of points, uh, but I don't think the big Purify plays are gonna be that important. So you can Purify Poison, and of course Purify Big Bleeds, but I don't think that's really gonna matter. And of course, this only affects... Like, this is not a targeted Purify, this is only uh, Purify your units. So... You would need to hit two units with Code Kodak to really make sense. And those would need to have effects on them. So I don't really see how Code Kodak is gonna be great. It can be awesome, but it's very unlikely to be awesome. Uh, King Ragnar. King Ragnar! Uh, anyway. Remove shields from all units, then boost self by free for every shield removed. So this shuts down enemy shields and also can you allows you to use your own defensive shields that were unused to uh, give yourself a big tempo. And I don't like this. I don't like the part where you remove your own shields. Although it might be too situational if it only removed enemy shields. But the fact that you remove your own shields is... Does allow you to just like have a, like a heavily shield based deck. And just have King Ragnar come in the end and like, Hey, what's up? We got points! So, that could be a, a bit annoying. So this encourages shield-based decks and counters shield-based decks at the same time. Which is a bit weird. So, King Ragnar, I, I guess. The, the past, in the past we had a, a deck type uh, armor where units had like a health buffer that didn't count as points, but that, that just uh, made it harder to get for them to get removed. And there were units that removed that armor and used it as points. But at that point you were just gaining... You just had a lot of defense. And if it was unused, then you just used it to get more points. So you, you were just basically had, had more points. And you were really hard to remove. So... Yeah, I don't know. I would like to see it in action. Sursa! Harmony. Deploy. Damage in by 2. A death blow boost on... Uh, boost unit in your hand by two. So this has the this has like an eight point swing, conditional eight point swing, uh, with harmony on it, which could worth like two to three points. Although that conditional nature does make it, uh, harder to put a good value on. I think this got to be like an eight, just because it has harmony. Although uh, four points alone is gonna make it uh, slightly weaker. And the more vulnerable to remove them. Turny 
Shell Mar. Damage an enemy by uh, and <clears throat> damage a uh, Nilfgaardian enemy unit by seven. Deploy range boost self by two for every known Nilfgaardian unit from your opponent's faction under your control. So either you just play a bunch of uh, assimilate uh, synergy cards and you just slam this guy down and you get a big uh, uh, turny Shelmar, or you take out the big spy uh, that you played or boosted somewhat on the enemy side. Pretty good. Uh, most likely gonna be a key card in Assimilate. Uh, it's also good in the long round, so... Looks pretty good. Uh, the cost is kinda... questionable. It's really hard to say beforehand, but I think this could be easily uh, an 8. 8-ish. Eight 8-10. to 10. I would like to see it in action. It's harder to judge. Corrupted Flaminica. Uh, destroy an allied beast to the right, then boost self by its power, give an enemy unit pleading for a number of turns equal to the destroyed beast's power. Uh, this only really makes sense if you're destroying something small, because you don't really want to give big bleeds out. Uh, you would need to have a big unit for that, you need a long turn for that, and you can get purified and you get punished. Uh, so, yeah, you would need to destroy something that kind of makes sense. So, kind of hard to say how uh, this is good. So, I could see this as like maybe a, a five-ish. I would need to see this in action. Gregory, the Gorgon. A damage an enemy by one. A death blow boost self by six and gain a shield. Uh, this is kind of like a Gale. At, with one more point And a bit more reliable effect of like get, get, getting six points instead of like Possibly getting 12 points, but maybe you're not gonna get that much. So I think this is a, a bit stronger than Gale, because it's a bit more reliable, and also has one more uh, point, but of course it's like deploy, so it's not like it can get shut down. And this can represent 11 points that comes with a shield, if you can set it up. Uh, this is pretty damn strong, actually. So I think this unit would need to be a 9, again. Because it's a conditional 11, that's at least a 5, but then, yeah, it's a 5 to 11, and I think it needs to come as a 9. At 8 it would be a bit too much, like you wouldn't put this in unless you have a, a better than average chance of uh, triggering it. So I think that's 66% at least, so I think this needs to be a 9. Also like, some removal. Whatever that is worth. Musicans of Blavican uh, randomly gain either shield, immunity, resilience, or poison. Okay, this is kind of like a joke card. Uh, resilience is obviously the best. Uh, getting poison is just bad. Immunity is okay. Shield is like okay. I think this needs to be like a, a 5 if they really want this. The thing, thing is, immunity and shield doesn't really matter, because, like, it doesn't matter. Poison might not matter, but it's it's a, it's a, it's a weakness. I could see this as a 4, but considering this is a neutral and it's kind of like a joke card, I, I think this needs to be a 5. Queen of the Night. Melee, give an enemy unit bleeding for 4 turns, or range, purify unit. Again, this, I think this has the cost of 7, and uh, can hit up to... Uh, 9 with bleeding like it could work purifying whatever she does so it's kind of like an okay card and she can also purify if it uh, becomes relevant I think this is uh, okay at the 7 also has some uh, versatility Artis whenever this unit played damage it by half uh, whenever unit is played damage it by half its power rounded up uh, this includes your units and the enemy's units uh, but of course you're gonna build your deck in such a way that it really benefits you. Uh, of course this guy might also get locked, so I don't know. You can't really rely on him to really help you out big time. You might, you might get locked or killed or whatever. And uh, so far Skellige doesn't have any reliable ways to give shield. Only a Nilfgaard and uh, a Nora Realm. So Artis, uh, this could be good, but I, it's not really a, a, a core card. Paul Marine. Damage an enemy by 2, death blow, give adjacent allied units shield, 
if melt isn't in your hand trigger death blow on deploy so it's a seven point card that gives two units shield which is pretty damn good but of course at that point you already played two vulnerable cards that stayed on and you now you're putting now you're giving them shields so that might not work as much so i think this is this card is not as good as it might seem uh i could see this as like a nine because it gives two shields or like or an eight at, like the thing is at that point like yeah no 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 it, it's 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 too good as an eight it needs to be a nine because you already have like stuff like ice giant where you get seven points with no removal for eight so this would need to be at least a nine like, come on like gives two shields i think the, even like uh, more than that can be really argued for like 10 at least a nine possibly a 10. sigvald order damage a unit by one reach two cooldown one uh berserk damage unit by two so the problem with this this is a puff Kogel that has one more point uh, ergo kind of harder to remove and uh, this would need to be at least a 9, but also has a pretty strong ability. So that makes him twice as good as Puffco. Uh, at least per round. So this would need to be at least a 10 at that point. Then we are playing a 6 point. Uh, 10 cost value generator. So I think at 10, this I could see this card. So this would need, need to be at least 10. But 11 can be justified as well. Because if you just set up the set up this guy or just make him make him stick on the board for some reason, and then you can just indirectly hit him as well, then just crazy. Like well, we're just gonna look at the next card. Not the callus. Deploy damage an allied unit to the right by half its power, then damage an enemy unit by that amount. So this is a six. That's what you get, but you can uh trigger something like a, a swap but fanatic and then you're just getting three points at that point of course you can also play sigvald and uh, combine it with avalok and make sigvald immune on play then play uh not the callus next to it and guess what in three turns you got yourself a two point value generator that's gonna give you 18 points or like 16 points or already gave you a, quite a few points but it's gonna give you like it's gonna give you the win if that works this is just the win by itself 16 points plus plus what he already had on top of that i'm just talking about the value he's gonna generate in eight turns two points 16 points that's stupid anyway great oak so by that alone i think this guy needs to be an 11. <laughs> screw this guy it's too good i think they like released him as on like an eight which is like, are you kidding me? Damage an enemy unit by the number of cards to the left of self, then boost self by the number of cards to the right of self. Pretty good unit. Also, this is cards, so it works with traps. And uh, if you can just like spam, then that makes sense as well. So, great talk, pretty good card. Not much to say. It's a good uh, finisher for Squirtel, but it's, it's a long round finisher card, so... That's a pretty important distinction. And that's it. Very exciting stuff. Uh, yeah. I love where Squirtel is going. I kind of like where uh, monsters are going. They're going to have a lot of like... Like limited value generation. I love, again, where Nilfgaard is going. This simulation and playing cards from the... Uh, from other factions. Like playing the strategy of your opponent. That's just crazy. Uh, no realm is kind of focusing on not dying, just actually just uh, actually playing your cards, like your engines, and uh, not getting wiped off the board. Uh, that would be a nice thing. So who am I forgetting here? <laughs> no, I think that's about it. Yo, Skelliga, my favorite faction. Not really. These guys are just getting more ridiculous. Screw Skelliga. But yeah, they're, they're getting strong, they're just getting back this whole harm myself and my opponent will regret it uh, archetype and it's gonna be pretty damn strong. This is gonna discourage removal because you don't wanna hit berserkers but like other 
Shield kind of discourages removal as well, but there is going to be like plenty of cards that encourage removal. Because you just can't let them stay up on the board. I nominate maybe this card, this as the worst faction card, but who knows? Uh, we'll see. Anyway guys, that's it for now. Thanks for watching and see you next time.